Hello, good day. Welcome back. Glad to have you. So I'm pretty excited because we're going to be leaving Intermediate, HTML Intermediate, and going into Advanced where we're going to start talking about forms, okay? And so this is where we left off doing a layout with Angular um, JS material. And so let me just jump to my um, terminal here. And what I did was I just created a directory and changed to it. So I created a directory called chapter 03, um, section 03. Chapter 03 is on HTML. Section 03 is advanced. And I just changed to that directory. And then we're still here in Git and it's semi at all. I'm on the materials layout. Now, if you don't have a fancy terminal like I do, I'm using a fish terminal here. You can see fish in the corner. Um, that's fine. You can do Git log and it's going to show you or even Git branch. Uh, branch. And it's going to show you that, oh, oh um, you're in the material layout branch and these are all your branches. Okay. And if you look, you're going to see also here it says head. Head is where you are, and head is on this material layout branch, which is also happens to be chapter um, section chapter three, section zero two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do git um, checkout minus branch chapter zero three section zero three, and um, this for now is going to be the exact same as uh, this is just another label for this exact same material layout branch, and that's because I'm branching right here now. I haven't made any changes, so they both are the same. But as I commit changes, this material layout is going to stay on this um, commit ID here. And then this, uh, this guy is going to move, uh, be moved. You'll see when I make my first change. So uh, let's, let's do it. And so um, here, this hasn't changed. This is still in the intermediate directory. So I'm going to say open folder. And I want it to go into the advanced directory. That's what I want to create stuff. And no file in here, so I'm going to say new file. I'm going to say index.html. And there's nothing there. And because I have templates installed for Bootstrap, I'm going to say choose temple HTML5 template, and that's installed it for me. Okay? And um, if I want, I could get skid this running. Uh, close that one. Have this one running. And so let's just change the title here to. Um, HTML forms, right? Or HTML form. And um, so in my body, um, it's almost like if we're going back to basic, HTML form is simply the form tag. Ah, come on. And then inside the form tag, you can put a number of tags. One of the most basic and simplest. Um, form element uh, you can create that's this is inside of a form tag so using the form element here introduces a HTML form is uh, input okay so you could say input and actually I'm not even going to do anything else and notice when I type that I got this box over here that I can type in see that's my my form now what you might want to do is actually um, put something in front of this like um, name like that and you know, so have something that looks like this now. So this is a label. You could select a label for your form, but just try to type in some text. Now you can be fancy and actually do something like this. Um, you can actually say this is a label and say label and for there's an attribute name and you'll see when where this makes sense. And then I'll remove this from here and put it here. And then I said this label is for something within the, uh, that has the value name. So here's my input, and if I want that label for, to, to kind of say that label belongs to this input, I could say name of this uh, input is name. And so now the browser kind of associate these two. Okay, it doesn't really matter. And I say could I just leave the the text in front of it, and it won't make any difference. But this is how you'd use the label element to kind of associate it with an in, um, like an input element, right? So to attach a label, if you want to make it explicit that way. And um, then I can do things like value equals some value. And if I save this, you'll uh, go over there and refresh. And you can see my input has some value. So this is some pre-populated value. Um, 
But what I might need more than, might be finding more useful than pre-populated value is something, pre-populated value is good if you want to use like a default. What I might want is a placeholder. Okay, and so let me save that. And I go over here, and now you see it's kind of faded, grayed out, but you could still see it. it says, please enter your name. And once I start typing, it goes away. Okay, once it's empty, it shows that. And so that's probably pre preferable in some uh, situations where you don't know what the value should be and you want to give the user a prompt, like, you know, please enter your name, please enter your email, please enter your street, that kind of thing. And this is, I think, preferable than doing something like this, you know, before placeholder, you had placeholder used to do um, something like this. You'd give direction to the user like here, like please enter like a name, for example. Right? You do something like that. Um, you've probably seen forms like that. Um, okay. So uh, I think a placeholder is, is much better. Even if you still want to do something like that, you could still say example. All right. You could still do the same thing. That's fine. All right, so now you've learned about the input form element. You can give it a name. You can give it a placeholder. You can give it a value. And notice the way I'm using it here. Uh, that's not that important. You can actually, it would still work if you do it, um, you know, the other way like this. But since you don't nest anything of inside of input uh, form element, I always end it this way to say, hey, there's nothing, no nesting going on. Um, you see the label um, form element. Um, so let's just duplicate this. And um, let's try and create a form. So I got a form in the mail yesterday. Um, I took a picture of it, but now I can't really upload it. Anyway, so I'll try and recreate that form. That form had this. It had straight. Um, I actually, actually arrived it here. I can look at it. And that's straight. And then that's on one line, so I could do BR to break, force it to the next line. And then what it had, it had um, city. So I should probably change this to name. But because, like I said, uh, I want to get away from using this, I'm just going to be all simple and take away that. Um, you're going to see something very different. Though, when, um, oh, I don't want to save this here. I want to save here. Um, refresh, right? Um, so now I say this is, no, I don't, I'm not using the name. So poop, placeholder, um, I'm not going to use placeholder here. Um, you should know what a street is. Um, you might still want to use name um, for your form because for some things, because when you submit a form, which is what happens when you say, I finished typing my information. I want you to save it to and send it to, back to the server. Because yeah, we haven't talked about it much, but when you write HTML pages, they're served up by a server. So in your web browser here, you're saying, go to the server at running on this port. And we haven't talked about all that stuff yet. But there's a, what happened is when I click this live button, it actually launches something called a, a web, simple web server. And this number represents my local computer. And this is the port number that that little, little server is running on. So I'm asking that to serve up this form for me. I'm asking for specifically for this form. And it's giving me back this form. And so if I had a submit button, which we'll get to in a minute, and I say submit this form, I'm say collect the data that you use of type and send it back to that um, server. Now, um, you in code, when you want to understand which field is the street and which one is the city, the only way you know that is because the form would take the name value and associate it with each um, property that's enter or value that's enter. And so that's how you would know. So yeah, so for that reason, you want to uh, give it a name, okay? Um, we'll see, when, depending on what kind of library you're using, you might be able to get away without giving a name, but that's beyond the scope um, of this. So this is straight. Uh, we can leave the first one with a label, ex explicit label. And then um, what they have coming after the street? That state. Um, okay, that's my phone. Okay. Oh, silly. Um, so let me do a copy and paste and paste. And they had a state. 
and they add zip and zip and they had this all on one line and so now it looks like this right um, the street um, let me take out this place over the street was much longer you know it went across let's say the entire page and so for this uh, there's a calls equals let's say 140 maybe and there's a number of columns or characters you you want to have and it's not spanning out so um, it, it's just so much space you want it to show up on the screen I mean you could type more than 40 in here I mean you could keep going even after you reach the end it just uh, keeps scrolling over so being able to just say how wide this is going to be. Um, so let's just do width style. With, uh, let's do 300 pixels. All right, so you, I could see a change in the background already. So that's how wide it looks on the screen. And so this is not lining up properly. Like you could see, it'd be nice to have this form, the beginning of this input line up with this one and so on. So we'll have to do a little bit more than just plopping them down here to, to hope that they line up. And it had home phone number, home phone, and then it had, okay, uh, home phone. Um, it had business phone, um, then mobile phone, and email address, okay? And then they had signature and date. Okay, so date was the last one and date and since this is um i'm gonna put name full name since you know signature they asked for a signature i'll just put full name instead of saying signature and this one was email address so i'm trying to recreate this form i'm looking at which you cannot see but you just have to trust me i thought these are <laughs> mobile phone and uh, this was on a line by itself and um, so I think it said um, so it was zip home phone and then business phone and then it did a BR there was a new line so we do a BR so the form pretty much looks something like this right uh, this went all the way to the width of the form, and then these guys were spaced out nicely. Of course, we're not going to get that without doing, using some layout thing, things like we learned before. So that's how you can lay this out, right? Using rows and stuff if you're using Bootstrap or whatever. You understand layout. I showed you how to do it with um, tables, so you can imagine how to do this. Um, you know, a table, there's the first row, and it span, you know, three columns. This would be a second row with each one of these things in their own cell. Um, and then these guys would be in, you know, out of rows. And that's the problem now, because now yet if you did three columns, now how do these guys take half and half? So you'd actually have to do six columns. And so each one of these take up two, as you can see. That's why people don't like doing table layout, then it's just much easier to use things, something like Bootstrap or AngularJS. But anyway, um, so that's, at the end, if I have some time, I'll, I'll probably, um, Try and do a better layout of it. So, so this is what the form look like here. But all these are, I didn't even say what type of input. This, we know a date input. If the user type this, that's not a valid date. So what we can do is say type equals date, right? And so now when the type is set to date, notice how it's rendered by the browser. So you can choose a date. And so it's impossible for you to type something um, invalid here. And full name is, you know, by default, these inputs are default into type equals text, right? All of them are default into type equals text. Well, again, email, the type for email is not just text. Um, so the browser knows that what email is. And so you won't see it here. Um, it wouldn't be, uh, I want to save here. Um, it wouldn't show anything visually that oh, this is an email, but um, there's a way, as you'll see later on, for us to be able to detect if somebody types something that's not an email. For example, if somebody just typed John at, 
that's not a valid email or even john at com that's not a valid email or john at bob you know or book or whatever um, that that's not all this is not valid email valid email is when it looks something like this and so this field know how to process what's a valid email if they type this that come you know it knows that that's not a valid email all this stuff right so it knows what a valid email phone number there's nothing special for a phone number so we can still do type equals um, and it depends on if you wanted to accept all text for your phone number or if you want to make it as number okay so you have to decide um, the reason you might want to still ac accept text instead of numbers is because you might want the user to be able to type in those dashes and so on. But notice, now that's a number, uh, I have this little scrolly spinner here, they call it. Okay? And so, uh, my phone, uh, should have muted this before. Okay? So, for that reason, uh, you might still want to use text because uh, it looks kind of weird. Um, here and if somebody may type in a phone number like this but it's not well formatted it doesn't look nice so um, you know and if they try to type in uh, you can't see it but I'm trying to type in text and it doesn't work so you might still want this to be text again there are controls that allows you to format that nicely and so home phone number again this defaults to type text but I'm making it explicit here um, this one is definitely type number. We should make this number. And, you know, type text. And type text. No, I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, here, double quote, okay. And this last one here, type equals text. All right, so sweet. Now we have a form. Let me expand this a little bit. Now we have a form, save it, and I go over here, refresh, and nothing looks any different than we think. There's only one thing that's missing. Now I'm looking at a paper form and reproduce this, okay? One of the things that you would want, as I said, when you finish typing up all your information, is to be able to say, oh, I'm done. And so you want to be able to put a button on the form. And so, B U T button, and, um, you know, type. You can do a submit button or a reset button. And so let's do a reset button first. And then I'll say clear, call this clear. And so um, save this, go here, and I refresh. And let me do a BR here so we can get this on a line by itself. And let's see, if I type some things, type some things, type it all over, whatever, you just might want to clear the form. Right, so that's what a reset button is for. Just hitting the clears the form, so you might want to give the user that. Um, the submit button is you know, you could call it submit or save, right? And essentially, it's the button that says, Hey, I'm done typing, take everything I've typed and send it to the back end. Now, if we click submit, what you see at the top is you see what it did. It seems like it made a request to the backend server with the names that we give for the, here. You remember I said, if you give the input names, that's how the form know how to associate it, value it. And it says name equals, and then there's nothing there, and ampersand name equal. So that's a one way of sending the information to the backend. I'll explain another time. So if I were to type something here like um, one, two, three, some street, and then I do is save again, you'll see that appears up here. So it's actually making a request to the server passed in these as parameters. So that's one way in which it could pass um, data from the form to the server. Of course, this is not very secure because as you can see, um, exactly where you type in the form is appearing at the top in the URL here. Um, so in this entire URL. So we haven't covered it yet, but there's um, something called action. Um, and it tells you where to send it when you do a save. And by default, it's sending it back to the same place this form was loaded. And then there's something called method. And you could do post or get. By default, it's doing a get. And that's what you see in there. It's trying to get this page and pass in the stuff on, with the parameters on it. But don't worry about that. If I do post now and I save it, uh, if I um, save this page and then um, I don't want to pass all that. Ah, uh, jeez. Um, let me see. Back, back, back. Okay. 
uh, here's where I want to be. Okay, here. And then if I type some things and then I click, oh, refresh. Okay. If I type some things and I click save now, notice how you see it cannot post, right? So try to do a post here. It failed, but you don't see those form values here. So that's a more secure way and that's what websites use now. Okay, so now you've learned about input labels, different types of inputs like number, email, date, and there are a number of other ones. I'm not going to show you all of them because you could just look and you can see. And buttons, how to do clear and submit buttons. You can, of course, call your button anything else and take other actions. So you can attach some JavaScript code so that if somebody click on it, before they actually do like the default of submitting, it prompts you and say, oh, are you sure you want to submit it and or validate the form first and then say, oh, something is missing. Or if they're going to clear it, you might want to prompt them to say, hey, you're about to clear it. So we'll continue and look at some more form controls, but let's do this. I said maybe I can, um, I can cut the video if it looks too long, but and you could skip over this part because this part is just how to lay this out with a table. And so let's do it. So let's consider this is the end of the video on forms. And then um, what I'm going to do now is just bonus, um, hopefully for five minutes. And so if you're not interested in seeing how to lay this out with tables, and you just want to do it with like Bootstrap or AngularJS, go right ahead. Or you don't care about the laying out of the form right now, go right ahead. So, all right, bye. See you in uh, the next video when we talk about more form, type of form controls. Uh, we'll cover like check boxes and so on. All right, and selection boxes and so on.